enabled him for a special assignment with World Bank in Washington, D.C. during 1998 and till 2001. I now invite Mr. Pandyan to give his presentation on introduce you to Vibrant Gujarat 2015. Mr. Pandyan, please. Thank you. Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat, Srimad Yanandi Bin Patel, Honorable Minister for Finance, Energy, Petrochemicals and Industries, Mr. Saurabh Bhai Patel, my colleague Mr. Amitabh Khan, Secretary to Government of India, our distinguished, our distinguished leader, Dr. Varejana, Chief Secretary of Gujarat, Mr. Sriram, Mr. Chatterjee, Please and Her Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> it gives me great pleasure to come and stand before you and to give you a brief introduction about Vibrant Gujarat. We all know what is Vibrant Gujarat. It is going on for the last 13 years. But if you want to know what is going to happen in 2015, I would like to draw your attention to the history of Vibrant Gujarat for a few minutes. This Vibrant Gujarat 2015 is a development for all. It's a working together and growing together. It's a Satki Saad and Sabke Vikas. This is a slogan given by the, the architect of Vibrant Gujarat, our then Chief Minister, Dr. Uh, Narendra Modi. Next, this is a picture I want to bring it to your attention. This is January 26th of Republic Day 2001. The disastrous earthquake shaken Gujarat. The culture was shaken. Ahmedabad was shaken. So the investment flow has reduced. We need a lot of money to rehabilitate, reconstruct Gujarat. It is under this background, Gujarat started introducing vibrant Gujarat summit to attract investment to rebuild Gujarat. Next. So it was mainly to attract investment next in 2003 and in 2005 to make it a preferred destination for investment and in 2007 the idea of vibrant Gujarat was to make it as the most preferred investment destination. In 2009 it was a showcase, showcasing Gujarat as a growth engine of India and in 2011 and 13, Gujarat has become a model state for development for other states in the nation. So that's, that's vibrant Gujarat history. We have invited number of companies from India, from abroad, across the globe. We have discussed, debated, and deliberated, signed MOUs, the government approval was given, and projects were implemented. 2001, it was a disaster. 2014, August 15, next. Our woman, first woman chief minister took control of the state, and because of the six vibrant Gujarat summit, Gujarat has introduced and developed a number of industries in the infrastructure sector. We don't believe just in laying foundation, we believe in inauguration. Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat has inaugurated so many projects which have been started two years ago and in the last three months he has inaugurated so many power projects, so many other projects, so many investments. Today, Gujarat is a power hub. It's a surplus, power surplus state. We are the biggest solar part of Asia in India. We have a big maritime base. We have two LNG terminals. We have, a, we have the uh, refining capacity. And this all happened because of the deliberation and debate which took place in the past vibrant Gujarat. We are all partners and the government supported this partnership and the result is the development. Next. Today, the future development is the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor region. Government of India is 
giving a big push and 36% of the corridor falls within Gujarat and the work is going on fast. We have developed a human resource capital. We have not simply introduced just investment and started factories. We have developed human resources. We have provided all other facilities to the industries and that's why this development. And what is 2015? 2015, Vibrant Gujarat will be a global business platform. Starting from the rehabilitation of a Kutch and Ahmedabad, developing at a model stage, showcasing as a growth engine of India, today the 2015 Vibrant Gujarat will be a platform for to do global business. It has four distinguished parts. The first day, January 11th, our then Chief Minister always chooses January 11th because it is a birthday of Swami Vivekananda who gave who gave the modern ideologies for modern India. So January 11th, kindly remember, January 11th, 2015 is a Sunday. But in respect of all these facts, we keep to the schedule. Sunday, kindly make it free to come and attend our vibrant Gujarat 2015 in Gujarat. It has an inaugural function. Honorable Prime Minister himself will inaugurate the function. First time, the Prime Minister of India will be coming to uh, Gujarat to inaugurate a vibrant Gujarat summit, followed by CEOs meet in the evening. There will be a partner country seminar between the inaugural summit and the CEOs meet. We have seven partner countries. These partner countries will bring their business delegation from their countries in various sectors. They will make a presentation. So this time Vibrant Gujarat is not just attracting investment to Gujarat. It is a platform where the investment opportunities across the globe will be discussed. Opportunities for Gujarat and Indian businessmen to invest in various countries across the globe will be presented and you can make the decision. Evening will be the CEO's conference of, 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 uh, of the global CEO's. We, ex we are expecting Next. The second day, a lot of seminars will be conducted. Theme seminars will be conducted. These seminars will throw input. These seminars will be attended by global speakers. These seminars will be attended not just by industries, but these seminars will be attended by Nobel laureates, best economists, industrial tycoons, business leaders, national leaders across the globe, various countries we are expecting. And the seminar will be based on theme subjects like small cities, sustainable energy, climate change, education for all, health for all, because we are going, we are going from development to working together and developing together and growing together. That day afternoon, we are going to have a state seminar because there will be a lot of partner states within uh, maybe from Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. We are expecting the states to join us. So the states also will be given an opportunity to present and it will be a state seminar and the evening will be the valedictory function. The main, next, the main, uh, uh, the main theme of uh, or the main attraction of this vibrant Gujarat this year is we have seven partner countries. This is the first time we are getting seven partner countries. In fact, we need to say many countries no because we are enough countries and we need to give a proper opportunity for all these countries. We are having Australia, we are having Great Britain, Canada, Japan, Netherlands, Singapore and South Africa. We have five continents. Some from, some, somebody from American continent, two people from the Euro continent, one from Australia, two from Asian continent, and one from African continent. All the continents will be represented as partner countries. We are expecting delegates from 120 uh, countries. So this, this seminar, or this vibrant Gujarat summit, is a different one in the sense. From the level of participants, quality of debate and the quality of deliberations, the quality of attendance. 
the quality of uh, arrangements. We are improving year by year. So we, I, I request all of you to come and attend this vibrant Gujarat summit. Again, there will be a global trade show. As usual, we conduct exhibition. This time is a hundred thousand square meter. It is bigger, bigger than Pragati Maidan. People from different countries, 105 countries have already uh, given consent to come and participate, put up their stalls. Different sectors will be there. Vendor sectors will be there. So it is show, not just showcasing the might of Gujarat, but it is showcasing the opportunities available for investment across the nation. That will be there from 8th to 13th January. Next. So today, Gujarat is meant for and this vibrant Gujarat is meant for growth for all, it's a development for all, it's a prosperity for all, it's a new GDP of this nation. Next. So friends, you are welcome to vibrant Gujarat. Come, discuss, deliberate, decide. I assure you, on behalf of government of Gujarat, that you will never regret in attending this meeting and in taking decisions in vibrant Gujarat. Thank you very much. Vibrant Gujarat will be your springboard for your global ambitions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pandyan. With that presentation, I'm sure you will have lots of people from this hall arriving in Gujarat. Sri Amitabh Kant. Sri Amitabh Kant is a senior officer from the Kerala Kader. Currently on deputation to the Government of India, he is posted as Secretary, Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion. Mr. Khan has extensive experience in infrastructure creation, international marketing, travel and tourism, and hospitality industry. He has conceptualized and executed the positioning and branding of Kerala as God's own country, and later the Incredible India campaign. He has structured large infrastructure projects for diversification of India's tourism product and sourced international funding through the ADB, Japanese Bank for International Cooperation and the UNDP. Known for his out-of-box thinking and successful track record with various projects which he has turned around, Mr. Kant is much sought after by corporates and government alike. May I now invite Mr. Amitabh Khan, Secretary DIPP, to give his special address. Honorable Chief Minister, Shrimati Anandi Ben Patel, uh, Mr. Saurabh Patel, the Honorable Minister for Finance, Industry, Energy, Petrochemical, Mines, Minerals, Mr. Varesh Sinha, the Chief Secretary, Mr. Ajay Sriram, Chandrajit Banerjee, my distinguished colleague, Mr. Pandyan. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the key challenge for India is to grow at rates of 10% plus, not for one year, two year, three years, but for the next three decades. That's the only way we'll be able to raise a vast segment of our population above the poverty line. And if India has to achieve this challenge, it just <coughs> needs to replicate the model of Gujarat. Look at Gujarat. Today in India, the highest urbanization level is in Gujarat, 43%. Look at Gujarat, the highest exports from any state of India comes from Gujarat at about 25%. Look at Gujarat, the highest share of investment in terms of value from any Indian state comes from Gujarat at 35%. Look at Gujarat again, its contribution to manufacturing and GDP, manufacturing which will be the key driver of India's growth. It clocks 28% against India's average of about 16%. 28%. It's higher than any other country in the world. Look at Gujarat again. The handling of cargo from Indian ports. 35% of the Indian cargo moves out of Gujarat ports from its 42 ports. And look at its SEZs, the large-scale SEZs. 45% of India's exports from its SEZs comes from Gujarat. And therefore, no wonder Gujarat has grown at the highest rates any state has clocked. 
rates of 10% plus for the last several years, year after year after year. Gujarat, in fact, is the only state which has power, which has water, which has very dynamic leadership, and last but not the least, it has a bureaucracy which has committed to very quick, fast decision making. I've worked very closely in Gujarat as the CEO of the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. I worked uh, with the present CM, I worked with Mr. Saurabh Patel, and this is a Bhulera which is being developed there, will be the world's largest, is the world's largest urbanization process which is taking place. It is, Dhulera is a city which has been planned for 920 square kilometers, 920 square kilometers. The size of Singapore is 670 square kilometers. It will be the biggest smart city which is taking place, which is being developed anywhere in the world. Now India has been, let me just tell you that India has been a very, very reluctant urbanizer. But Gujarat has driven the process of urbanization. And this has been possible because the present CM who was the revenue minister was able to give the land from the state for this process of the development of Dholera. And Dholera today is using technology to leapfrog in this process of smart urbanization. And actually it will drive the process of urbanization, it will drive the process of growth. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not in Gujarat, you are missing out the biggest opportunity of growth, of progress, and of development anywhere in the world. Gujarat is your biggest opportunity to leapfrog uh, as businessmen, as investors, as financiers. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Kant. And now we have Sri Sorambhai Patel, Honorable Minister of Finance, Gujarat. Actually, his portfolio is a very large one. Sri Sorambhai Patel is the Honorable Minister for Finance, Energy and Petrochemicals, Mines, Minerals, Cottage Industries, Salt Industries, Printing and Stationery, Planning, Tourism, Civil Aviation, Labor and Employment. He is the Chairperson for Organizing Vibrant Gujarat 2015 Summit. He is currently a member of the 13th Legislative Assembly and has served in the same capacity in 10th and 11th Assembly. He has pursued an MBA from a prestigious university in USA. Saurabh Patel has initiated some far-reaching changes as a minister of diverse set of portfolios. Under his visionary leadership, the ministries have notched up brilliant performances. He is the brainchild behind the Asia's biggest solar power project as well as pilot project of rooftop solar panel on Narmada Canal. I now have the pleasure to invite the Honorable Minister of Finance, Mr. Saurabhai Patel, to give his special address. earthquake which took place in the run of Kutch. It was a small <coughs> area with a thousand people. It was basically for attracting investment. And today we are having a summit 2015 which has been transferred from an investor destination to a global business hub. And over this period of 
11 years, Gujarat has changed 360 degrees from what it was and what it is today. Last decade has been one of the best decades the state had ever had. And the full credit goes to <coughs> the existing Prime Minister, Honorable Shri Narendra Bhai Modi. He had a vision, he had plans of how to convert Gujarat into a growth engine of the nation. In the year 2002, we had a lot of economic issues. We are facing all types of problems. And today, if you look at it, we have a lot of strengths. The strength today is basically because of a very strong views that the state should be policy driven. And all our decisions, policies have been framed in such a manner that it has been very, very transparent. Our other strength is our infrastructure. We were a power deficit state. And today, against our demand of requirement of 13,000 megawatts, conventional, non conventional together we have 22,000 megawatts. So you can imagine the strength what we have. Second, we talk of generation, but this is one state which also talks of transmission. And every year, even today, we spend around 2,000 to 3,000 crores on building of a transmission network. So anywhere in the state of Gujarat you'd like to go and put in investment, you won't have to worry about the energy. Third is the quick decision making. That was one of also a strength. And one thing I can assure you over here, that our Honorable Chief Minister Anantin Ben Patel, she is known for taking very quick decisions. So you go to a LIU issue and I can vouch on behalf of the whole government that that clarity she has will help the investors and everyone in the government for quick decision making. Our one of our more important strengths is that the least mandate lost in the state other than in the country is from the state of Gujarat. So we have a lot of strengths. And finally, when such a massive investment is coming up, we are aware that skill requirement, manpower requirement is also of equal importance. Today we are spending more than a thousand crores only on skill development. And we do take companies as partners, so we are also are aware of the requirements of the industry. We are open for any suggestions and any views as far as growth is concerned. Shri Amikaji mentioned that we are in the 28% GDP, but we have plans to increase it to 32% next three years. So that is the reason why very important policy decisions that will be taken by the Chief Minister in the next one, one and a half months. We are working on our new industrial policy, which we are coming up very shortly. Emphasis will be given also on small, medium enterprises. We are coming up with an electronic policy because all, you all know that a lot of imports are taking place in the country in the electronics hardware sector. And sector has come up with a very good policy and in the state of Gujarat also would like to replicate the same. So that we want to make electronics also as one of the manufacturing states. IT policy also we think of coming in. So all these things will be done in a very short span of time. And when you are aware that once we take a call that we want to focus on this sector, we go all out. Automobiles is an example. Today, we were nothing in the automobile sector some five years back. And today, we are one of the hubs in the country which is attracting most of the automobile manufacturers in the state of Gujarat. Textile policy, technical textile policy is also very aggressive and I'm sure maximum value addition from cotton to fabrics will happen in the state. As was mentioned over here, we have a very strong network of roads, strongest ports, which we are expanding at a very fast rate. 
which will build in new capacities also. So all this is going to add value and will bring in a lot of investments in the street. Today we have gathered over here for Vandran Gujarat 2015. 2003 we didn't have any partner country. Today we are having seven. So this is an event where the partner countries have also a lovely opportunity to focus their countries and enter into joint ventures with Indian partners. Whether the trade happens in India or the trade happens in their country, but it's a win-win situation for all of us. Second time, state pavilions are also going to come in in a massive way. So this, it's not a question of bringing investments only in the state of Gujarat, but the states in our country can showcase the best policies in this event. So basically it's an opportunity for all. And I'm sure all of us over here will take it to the best advantage for everyone of us. I once again invite you to Web in 2015, which will be one of the best events ever taken place. And our Honorable Chief Minister is personally supervising each and every event, whether it is a seminar, whether it is a major event, and we hope that it will be beneficial to all. I once again welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patel. <clears throat> Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we are all waiting for, Aaj ki is Mahasabha ki vishisht atithi, Shri Mati Anandi Ben Patel. Brave, determined and dedicated, Anandi Ben Patel holds the rare distinction of being Gujarat's first woman chief minister. She has been a minister in the Gujarat government since 1998, and made significant contributions to the Gujarat model of development during her tenure as Minister of Education, Roads and Building, Capital Development, Women and Child Development, as well as Disaster Management over the years. She also holds the distinction of being the only woman MLA to have won four consecutive elections in Gujarat from three different constituencies. She has been a senior minister in one of the most stable state governments India has seen in the past decade. She is an ardent advocate of employing technology for good governance and development. She is very passionate for issues related to women and children, particularly combating malnutrition. Known for giving her best in whatever she does, she was conferred the President's Award for the Best <coughs> Teacher she exemplified her bravery and concern for her students when she jumped into River Narmada to rescue two girls from her school while on a picnic. <laughs> After serving the state in the capacity of minister since 1998, Mrs. Patel has been unanimously chosen as the Chief Minister of Gujarat. She hopes to take Gujarat to new heights on the roadmap carved out by her predecessor. She is handling many important portfolios, currently some of which include home, revenue, urban development and industries. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our proud privilege to have Srimadhi Anandi Ben Patel in our <coughs> presence today. I now invite the Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat to address us and request all of you to warmly welcome her once again. and 
the captains of Indian industries. I am pleased to be amongst you at this event for the first time as the Chief Minister of Gujarat. Gujarat is not new to most of you now. Many of you have contributed to its growth story. I take this opportunity to acknowledge the trust that you have put on us all these years. With your support, today Gujarat accounts for more than 7.5% of India's GDP, 18% of India's fixed capital and 25% of India's exports. Gujarat is thus playing a big role in the Indian growth story. We envisage a bigger role for Gujarat as the Indian economy grows under the able leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Bhai Modi. In fact, the global community and the industry too will now have a much bigger role in taking our economy and social well-being to a higher level. We in Gujarat are a strong believer of the fact that together we all grow to greater heights. To make the pie bigger for everyone to have a share of it, we started Vibrant Gujarat Investor Summit in the year 2003. Thereafter, it has been institutionalized as a biennial event. What started as an exercise to showcase Gujarat as an investment destination has now transferred into global networking event. Today, Vibrant Gujarat Global Summit represents a worldwide platform for knowledge sharing and social and business transformation. Gujarat has now emerged as a global business hub. More importantly, we are giving a considerable thrust on social sectors including health, education, women empowerment and specialized areas like innovation and climate change. I would also like to make a special mention of the convention we have for the MSME sector. Friends, I will like to humbly state that last six summits have been a resounding success. Vibrant Gujarat 2013 witnessed participation from nearly 1,121 countries with over 2,100 foreign delegates and around 58,000 Indian delegates. Nearly 18,000 investment intentions and about 2,700 strategic partnerships were signed in a number of areas, including technology transfer, R&D, education, and manufacturing. We have created an entire ecosystem that assures business friendly and investment conducive environment, be it re-engineering of our systems, creating requisite infrastructure, skilling our manpower or networking for finances. We are now geared up for the seventh edition of the Vibrant Gujarat Global Summit, which is planned during 11 to 13 January 2015 at Mahatma Mandir, Gandhinagar. I am happy to share with you that this edition has been partnered by seven countries. Saptarshi, seven is are considered very pious for us. I hope with seven partner countries in this seventh edition of Vibrant Summit, we will all work together 
to see that India shines across seven seas. I am happy to add here that seven RCA has kindly consented for the presence of Honorable PM at the inauguration I take this opportunity to invite all of you, the global community at large, the leaders, government and industry of all the nations, as well as the leaders and the industry of other Indian states to participate in the Vibrant Gujarat Global Summit 2015. Welcome to be a part of the Inclusive Development Agenda. Let us come together to deliberate and evolve new <coughs> mechanisms to make our economics vibrant and sustainable. Let us meet and find new ways to ensure inclusive development. Let us strive collectively to make this world a better place to live. The key themes identified for the summit include innovation, sustainability, youth and skill development, women empowerment and knowledge sharing. We look forward to meaningful engagement with all the stakeholders who work in this area. Friends, I feel privileged to carry forward the rich legacy of India's visionary leader Sri Narendra Bhai Modi. We are working hard to fulfill his dreams of building great and grand Gujarat. On the strong pillars that we have laid down in the last decade, our focus is improving the quality of life of the people by providing world-class infrastructure. Our focus is on creating enabling environment for the people to fulfill their aspirations. Our focus is on inclusive growth so that every citizen gets an equal opportunity to grow irrespective of gender, social, status, economic class or geographical barriers. For this, we aim to explore and adapt new technology, encourage new innovations and enhance the capability of our human resource. Once again, I humbly invite all the nations and industry to come to Vibrant Gujarat 2015 to pave the way for a world of development and inclusive growth. Jai Jai Gaur Gujarat, Jai Jai Gaur Gujarat, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for the Q&A and some interaction. Uh, we had sent out forms which many of you have filled and submitted it here. We have received a number of questions. However, at this point we are able to accommodate a few of them only. But any of you who want more questions answered, want to meet with the government of Gujarat officials, are most welcome post lunch to meet them from 2.30 to 4 o'clock in this hall itself. We have present with us all the concerned departments from Government of Gujarat and queries which cannot be addressed here today will be responded to by email. I now invite few of the names that have been given to ask questions. May I invite Urmila Shah, Urmila Shah, CFO, Simic Industri Industri Resources Private Limited. Can someone please give her a mic? Yeah, 
Right. The first question was about the anomalies in SSA policy and the state laws. Uh, one example which I can cite is the VAT exemptions. Uh, although I understand SSA was basically uh, conceived as export zone, but now I see it is getting developed as international zone. So if the uh, if the honourable minister can take it up with the Assembly ministry, since we have the secretary for uh, the DIP here. Uh, if these anomalies can be removed, it will help the industry to use the SZ to its best. Thank you for this uh, question. Uh, the SEZs uh, were conceived uh, with a particular policy framework and uh, during the earlier government there were two issues on which there was a lack of consistency. One was uh, MAT and uh, the second was the distribution tax. Uh, these issues have been taken up with the finance ministry and you would have heard the Honorable Prime Minister announce recently <laughs> in Maharashtra that uh, the SEZ policy uh, would be fixed so that they can become the key drivers of growth and uh, development. Uh, so we are hopeful that in the next three to four months, the SEZ policies will restore some of the benefits which were earlier given and they will become the key drivers of exports as well. Thank you. Uh, my second question was on uh, Gujarat has several ports. Kandra is, I think, uh, driving the maximum volume. So uh, although we've seen some efforts for using Nablaki and Pipabao and other, other ports, but the infrastructure blockade which comes as a hindrance for the industry to look at them. Uh, I would draw attention of the uh, ministry to you know, kindly look at them so that the other ports can equally uh, deliver the results. That we have decided to expand our lucky and uh, these are, there are some issues which will have to be taken up with Government of India, so we will do the needful matter. I will also uh, supplement your questions. Um, even though the current traffic is more from the Kutch region, Kandla and Mundra, but Navalaki port is also being equally developed uh, now by Gujarat uh, Maritime Board. Um, number of coal importers uh, started, other goods have also started. Vipav Power Pro Vipav, uh, Port is a public private partnership model. It is developing very well. Even the, even, uh, even the defense has uh, also started using it to build uh, uh, various uh, vessels, ship, and uh, uh, it is growing very fast, I think. But also linking these ports through uh, the railway and through road, yes. government of Gujarat and government of India has taken up as a special uh, item. Uh, and the roads have been expanded because the hinterland is uh, is in um, Delhi and Jabal and a, a special uh, we have returned to the railway ministry for a special railway connection or to expand the connection from Navalaki to other part. I think you'd like to add something? Yeah. Uh, you know most of the goods produced in the northern part of India it all travel about 82% of the goods produced travel by lorries through the roads to the ports in the western coast of India, all these 42 ports in Gujarat. By 2017 end, the dedicated freight corridor will carry only containers, no passengers, only containers. So 2017 end, when the dedicated freight corridor comes up, goods will reach the ports on the western coast of India within 14 hours. So from 14 days to 14 hours will be the radical shift, it's a paradigm shift. And actually most people here who are planning to invest should look at that 14 hours. And within, you know, as we create the dedicated freight corridor, on both sides of this dedicated freight corridor are the new smart cities which are coming up, which will get linked up with this. So the biggest beneficiary of the dedicated freight corridor, the Delhi Mumbai Industrial <coughs> Corridor, will be the state of Gujarat where almost, what, 40% of this area falls in Gujarat. Thank you. Thank you. May I now request Group Captain Anil Thapar, COO, Mesco Aerospace Limited, to ask the next question. Can you stand up wherever you are? We can get a mic to you. Thank you. I request all of you to make your questions brief because that way many more questions can be asked and more people will get the opportunity. 
and Rajiv Woodruff, he has to rush because of medical emergency. I'm also from Mexico Aerospace, so I'll ask his question. We are looking at uh, setting up aircraft recycling facility in India, and for that we need a government uh, airship which is long enough to land bigger aircraft. So what is the policy of the government of Gujarat in terms of giving on long-term lease uh, any airstrip which can accommodate landing of bigger aircraft. Thank you. See, we can, uh, we, any, any, any proposal of any company on, on the airways, we can, we can consider on a case-to-case -case basis. We will certainly be fair, favorable. At the moment, there is no policy, but if there is a need, we will certainly come up come up with a policy. But any proposal which is good will be very much welcome and we will examine it. See, right now, we have coming up with another seven new airports in the smaller areas. So we can work out an agreement by which you can use it on a long term lease. It will not be possible to completely hand over the airstrip to you on a long term arrangement. But possibly working, we can come to a an agreement. And there are a lot of areas to settle details, we'll work it out. Thank you. Before I ask the next question, if any of you uh, have these forms which were given to you earlier, or you'd like to collect them just now, and fill them up and hand it over to any CII person or the desk here. The questions would still be welcome. I now invite Mr. Ravdeep Sodhi, CEO, the ECORE Group. Can you stand up, please? Um, thank you so much. We are Guizhou International Investment Corporation from China. And then we want to ask some questions. First, uh, we want to invest, uh, invest the infrastructure and the power constructor and the electric, uh, electric power. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll uh, skip that question just now because I had already requested Mr. Sodhi to ask a question. Let him finish and then we'll come back to you. Mr. Sodhi, please. Uh, hi, uh, this is uh, actually we work in cybersecurity solutions and uh, this is not only the question from our end but also I